21st Century, in association with Worldwide Distribution Services, a subsidiary of Intercontinental Video, presents a remarkable enterprise's production. Captain, Captain Krennan. Krennan. You're the only man alive that can handle this mission, Krennan. I know, sir. It's up to you to save my empire, Captain. Yes, Your Majesty. Do you realize, Krennan, that the fate of the continental United States is in your hands? Fear not, Mr. President. It's not for nothing that they call me... The world's most fabulous man. Computer readout. Subject, Captain Elvis Brandenburg Kremen. Born December 25th, 1950. Height, 6 foot 10. Physical attributes, supreme athlete, concert pianist, concord pilot, mountain climber, diplomat, space captain, and genius. IQ, 498. Hi, kids. Kremen here. You remember last time, Gort, leader of the Thargoids, banished us to Sonaru 9 to spend the rest of our lives digging in the mud mines. Well, have fun in the mud, you three. <laughs> you evil nerd. I summoned up a whopper and spat in his eye. <laughs> You'll pay for this, Kremen. How much? Fifty P. Done. Guards hustled us out of the throne room and bundled us into an auto-drive galactopod with just enough fuel for a one-way trip to Sonaro 9. The ship rose slowly into the green night sky and slipped effortlessly away. Captain, I really don't think you should have spat in his eye like that. You're right, Carla. I should have stuck my foot up his nostril instead. I know, but look what's ahead of us now. Banished forever to a radioactive lump of mud. Well, at least we won't be lacking for company, Captain. What do you mean? There are other people on this moon, you know. Really? Who are they? Many years ago, Captain, the Thargoids ran out of natural sources of energy, just as the Earth did in 1994. Mm -hmm. And just like us, they looked for other ways of obtaining it. Well, it certainly looks like they succeeded. Indeed. They discovered that one of their moons, Sonaru 9, was entirely made of radioactive mud, just right for converting into power. So they sent teams of workers to dig it out. Don't tell me. The radioactivity reduced them into mumbling, brainless dum-dums. Yes, Captain. And they are hoping the same will happen to us. Is there no protection against this radioactivity? The only thing that really works is to dress from head to foot in pure silver. But we haven't got any. Well, what's the closest thing to silver, Captain? The Lone Ranger's bum, Carla. Oh. A few hours later, we arrived. We looked out of the porthole and saw it there below us. It was a moon about the size of Earth's, but brown, wet, and yucky. Suddenly, the fuel ran out, and we plummeted down to the surface. Here, Carla, put these space wellies on. Oh, Captain, look out there. A reception committee. Sure enough, coming towards us through the mud was a group of radioactive mud men. Limping, twisted lumps that once had been human, now nargled beyond recognition. Oh, Captain, look! That one's got three knees. Their leader opened up a hole in his head and spoke. <laughs> What did he say, Doc? He said it's extremely difficult to talk. It's extremely difficult to talk to you with a mouth full of mud. Well, tell him to spit it out. Spit it out. Thanks. As the doctor stood there with a mud Gilbert sliding down the front of his spacesuit, I measured Carla for radioactivity. Oh, oh. Golly, Carla. What? According to this Geiger counter, you've got far too many Geigers. Oh, Captain, if I die, you can have my hi-fi and the keys to my flat and all my expensive collection of doobries. Carla, and... I wouldn't let you die. You know that. And my life-size fuzzy bear doll. And... Carla! And this handy-dandy transistorized escape kit. Carla, there's no way that I... What? Escape kit? Did you say escape kit? Yes, Captain. I always carry it with me. You know the scrapes a girl can get into. <gasps> Gotadamon, Captain. It's a quadrostatic interstellar matter transporter. Oh, so it is. It's too small to transport us back to Earth, but it'll take a written message. Anyone got a pen? Yeah, Captain. What? Use this. Norg snapped off one of his fingers. 
We sharpened the nail and dipped it in mud. What are we going to say? Well, how about... Uh, we worked here. out the message, addressed it to the President of the United Armed Forces of Planet Earth, and set it to appear in his office. I pressed the debris marked send, and we all stood back. Well, Doc. What? How long do you think it'll take to reach Earth at this distance? Well, taking into account the basic diametric polarity of structural nucleonic watts, it, it should be rematerializing about now. Meanwhile, back on Earth. Gee, look, Mr. President. Why? There's a glowing thing appeared on your dais. Why, that's a matter transporter. Those things are only used in times of cosmic distress. Quick, open it. Whoever sent that needs our help. It's from Captain Crammon. Crammon? It says, Carla, Dr. Gipfinger, and I are being held prisoner on the Thargoid moon. Prisoner? While Gort, leader of the Thargoids, is planning an Earth attack. Earth attack? Send nuclear strike force immediately. By the bones of Shirley Temple, they'll pay for this. Launch a nuclear attack. I'll get on to it right now, sir. Help you. Hello, is that nuclear attacks? Can you send one up straight away? All right, thank you. From firing ranges all over Earth, rockets thundered away. Their delicate nose cones seeking the target from information I'd put in the note. Meanwhile, back in the mud mine... Oh, Captain, what? this mud, it's getting on my wick! Never fear, Carla. We'll be off this moon faster than you can say, eeny, meeny, macaracker. Uh, oh, Captain, look! The matter transporter! They've sent it back! Go to Dalaroon, Captain! This was the moment I'd been secretly waiting for. I hurriedly opened the pod, and there inside was what I'd been hoping to find. A two-way radio. Kremen to Earth. Hello, Kremen to Earth. Come in, please. Earth uh, speaking, Captain. Listen, we've sent up a nuclear strike force, but the bombs can't hit Thargoidia. They've got some sort of invisible shield up. You'll have to tackle it from your end, Captain. Weaken the shield for just one second, and all the bombs can fall through onto the surface. But if I'm there weakening the shield, all the bombs will fall on me. It's the only way, Captain. But I, I do it I... for the Queen. Huh? She's here with me and wants a word with you. Oh. I have my husband to support me. He shares all my ideals and all my affections for you. Don't fail to tune in next time, space addicts, as Cosmic War splits your TV screen apart in the next episode of Captain Kremen! <laughs> 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 <laughs>